So we're still on page 100, and we're now at exercise 32. And uh, this next rhythm is a little bit of a sequela from the last rhythm I described. So if you if if you skip the last uh, ECD exercise number 31, I recommend you go back and listen to that one because um, it sort of leads into this one. Now, uh, for starters, um, there's no rate here really because there are no QRS complexes. Um, all we see are P waves. The P waves are present and upright and contoured. Um, there's no PR interval because there's no QRSs. So if there's no depolarization of the ventricles, uh, the patient is dead, right? Uh, they're dead because uh, if the ventricles aren't contracting, they've got no cardiac output, they are vital signs absent, they are dead. We have no QRS complexes, so there's no ratio. Uh, well, the rhythm of P waves is regular, but the interpretation of this, uh, this is called ventricular standstill. And for all intents and purposes, this is uh, virtually the same as asystole. Now, the good news is that if you ever saw a patient with just P waves like this, well, your first reaction would probably be, what the f is going on here? Um, but the good news is this is not quite like asystole. Asystole... Um, can be a patient who's been dead for five minutes or for several days, um, whereas someone who has ventricular standstill who has P waves here is probably someone who developed a third degree AV block but no compensatory focus down of the ventricles took over pacing of the heart. So they went into a cardiac arrest, into a ventricular standstill. But what this means is when you see P waves, it means that it's a fairly fresh cardiac arrest. So you want to work them aggressively with CPR and other interventions. Um, whereas a systole, purely a flat line, you know, could be someone who's who, who's been dead for quite some time, and it's usually a, a terminal event, and, and the patient we're likely going to uh, pronounce uh, or going to be unsuccessful in resuscitating. So this is, uh, I guess, a fairly good sign. Now, um, this is assuming that the patient suddenly developed a third degree view block without a compensatory focus down the ventricle. Now, the other thing can, that can happen, uh, which would be our fault, is that the patient develops a third degree view block and we give them an antiarrhythmic. And if you recall from the last presentation, I was saying that if a patient's in a third degree AV block and the only thing keeping them alive is a focus down here in the ventricles that's firing at, let's say, uh, 30 beats per minute, the last thing we want to do is give them um, a drug, an antiarrhythmic, that's going to stop that focus from firing. Um, and of course, I didn't mean to imply that we inject drugs into the heart because we don't do that, but <laughs> we don't want to give them an antiarrhythmic that's, that's going to eliminate that focus uh, because otherwise we end up with a third degree AV block that converts to this um, ventricular standstill. And that certainly is not good for the patient and is not good for your resume.